Уважаемые, уважаемые коллеги, прошу uh, занять ваши места. Uh, мы начинаем uh, нашу сессию. Uh, уважаемые коллеги, прошу занять места. Значит, мы сегодня мы начинаем Today, немножечко необычную такую целую серию лекционных сессий, в которых наши знаменитые или ведущие офтальмологи по различным проблемам представят свои именные лекции. И я думаю, что это, конечно же, будет очень интересно. И вначале я хотел представить слово профессору Борну. У него лекция будет называться «Новые данные и тенденции в распространении причины, причин и причинах глобальных нарушений зрения». База данных uh, Global Vision. Здравствуйте. Um, меня зовут Руперт Борн, and I come from uh, Cambridge yeah. University Hospital uh, uh, in England. Cambridge I want to thank uh, Professor Bibkoff and the organizing committee for the very kind invitation uh, to speak to you. This is obviously a very important uh, conference, and it's a great privilege to be asked to uh, speak to you today. Меня пригласили uh, выступить с лекцией. Uh, мой so русский язык, знание русского языка очень ограничено, поэтому okay. очень благодарен за помощь so, um, в переводе. You, uh, Сегодня я хотел бы поговорить uh, uh, с вами And, uh, о базе данных Global Vision. Это очень интересный пример сотрудничества между эпидемиологами. Эпидемиологи – это the, uh, те специалисты, которые занимаются изучением заболеваний, глазных заболеваний на уровне популяции Epidemiologists from around the world who are involved with this project. So I am speaking on their behalf. 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 So I am Большое внимание уделяем эпидемиологии. Мой интерес сосредоточен в области изучения проблем глаукомы. Это то, с чем я работаю каждый день и чем я занимаюсь исследованиями. Также занимаюсь офтальмологической эпидемиологией. And uh, я работал в Москве um, I uh, 20 in Moscow лет назад в Тушинская больница. И там я получил свой первый эпидемиологический опыт в Москве, когда принцесса Диана работала с детьми problems with diphtheria, and that was my first experience of working in Russia. It was a wonderful experience, and we published work on that, and that was my first understanding of looking at the disease within populations. And I want to try and excite you and introduce the young residents here, the young trainees in epidemiology. So this conference is Интересовать вас эпидемиологией. Конференция посвящена Западу и Востоку. Я хочу показать вам север. Это небольшое видео, которое посвящено моему опыту и работе с эпидемиологией в области заболеваний глаз в Гренландии 25 лет назад. Надеюсь, это заинтересует молодых специалистов в том, чтобы заняться вопросами эпидемиологии в офтальмологии. Иногда нужно определять большие расстояния для того, чтобы добраться в удаленные части и страны, для того, чтобы собрать информацию о возможных заболеваниях в разных сообществах. Это Гренландия, это инуиты, 
to get there, you have to fly from Iceland to Greenland, across the Denmark Strait, and then you um, cross into Greenland itself. Um, while I was uh, there, I uh, also had the opportunity to explore uh, the, uh, the country a little, uh, which is another very interesting thing about epidemiology. You, you get to meet other people from different countries and interact with them and uh, collaborate. While I was here, I climbed uh, the three highest mountains in the Arctic, uh, uh, while I was only in my early 20s, so I was still мне еще интересно было рисковать жизнью в тот момент. Я работал с сообщество специалистов. Uh, the 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 uh, towns in Greenland to look after the eye health. They send uh, one ophthalmologist uh, every year uh, to look at the eye health. So we might just speed this uh, video up. Давайте немножко, если возможно, ускорите, пожалуйста, видео. Ah, here we go. So this is the Danish ophthalmologist arriving at in uh, one of the villages of Greenland. There are only two villages in Greenland on the east coast of Greenland. Greenland stretches from Sweden to Morocco in terms of distance. And this is the village here. So we looked at glaucoma for the first time in this village uh, because there is a lot of angle closure glaucoma within this population. And this is uh, working with Inuit um, people uh, to measure uh, intraocular pressure, uh, to look at gymnoscopy, and ultimately um, then to treat patients uh, who have ankle closure. So that is done with a YAG laser, and the laser is uh, carried in a suitcase, uh, which enables the Danish ophthalmologist to perform the treatment. And this is the Danish ophthalmologist who is now treating the uh, uh, patient with uh, a YAG iridotomy. So the, the uh, Greenlanders are the world record holders for angle closure. Uh, they have much more angle closure than other uh, groups in the world. And this is another interesting point about epidemiology. We begin to understand the, the pattern of diseases in different countries. So this brings me to the main subject of the talk, which is the Global Vision Database. I'm very lucky to work with um, notable ophthalmic epidemiologists such as Jos Jonas here in the audience and Professor Bidkov um, with uh, his Ural um, study. And uh, we uh, are able to um, uh, publish the world estimates on vision loss, uh, so the global estimates of vision impairment and blindness, so that everybody can access this data. And this uh, is one of our examples we had at Arvo, which is the main global eye research meeting uh, two years ago. So we can project the, uh, the data uh, from a global perspective and show change in blindness over time. So I'm going to talk to you about what we do, uh, how uh, blindness is, is changing over time, um, and uh, also some information about the Russian Federation, and then a little bit about my home country. We work with the Global Burden of Disease Study. This is a very big international project. It is funded by Bill Gates, and this study looks at the prevalence of disease, not just ophthalmology disease, but uh, all diseases. And then uh, it adds a disability weight to the prevalence, and then they calculate DALIs, disability-adjusted life years. Now, a DALI is 
скорректированная пружинная жизни, скорректированная по инвалидизации. То есть Дели такая монетка такая, которая позволяет оценивать нагрузку, и, соответственно, вот это Дели, этот показатель используется правительствами при расчете ресурсов, которые выделяются на здравоохранение. Мы можем оценить распространенные заболевания, например, слепота, вызванная катаракты, это оценивается по результатам исследований, которые делаются по всему миру, однако исследования глобальной нагрузки, которые представляют заболевания, они добавляют фактор инвалидизации. Например, слепота более, с этой точки зрения, важна, чем ампутация ноги по причине диабета, диабета например. И по этой причине ставят они слепоту выше по шкале от 0 до 1. То есть это вот фактор, вес, который вносит инвалидизацию. И это, конечно, строится на основе оценки популяции. Они рассчитывают год жизни с корректировкой по инвалидности. И вот как это делается. У вас есть года жизни, скорректированные по инвалидизации, сочетание годов, то есть жизнь без дисабилити, плюс количество годов, которые потеряны в силу того, что человек умирает раньше, из-за инвалидности или заболевания. Это насыщенные таблицы, которые являются результатом публикации, и они показывают, что со временем можно видеть динамику с 2005 года, например. Вот этот показатель Дейли на этой таблице. Вы видите процентные извинения, 26% повышение, например, потерь слуха, связанные с возрастными нарушениями по катаракте, например, вы видите заболевания потому что мы смотрим на ранжирование заболеваний, когда правительство на это смотрит. Это для нас, для офтальмологов, важно, что потеря зрения так высоко находится в этом ранжировании. Что мы делаем? Мы проводим систематический обзор, мы смотрим на все акупационные основанные исследования, которые проводятся по миру с 1980 года, и далее мы объединяем эти данные и предоставляем данные для исследования глобального и это позволяет им калькулировать дисабилитизированный жизненный год. Так что это очень большой проект, который мы проводим с многими коллаборациями с учеными и исследователями. И, по сути, мы являемся главными сборщиками таких данных в исследовании по всему миру. Очень важный момент, если брать исследования глобальной обременения заболеваний, это то, что профиль по характеристике заболеваний меняется. Это то, что мы называем эпидемиологическим переходом. Я поясню, что имею в виду. Популяции по всему миру стареют, население стареет. There is a change in the spectrum of types of disease, depending on time, but also in different countries. So, for example, if you take Nigeria, the majority of disability-adjusted life years, the majority of the health burden is due to maternal and neonatal diseases, which is the orange area of the box. And a smaller proportion of the overall health burden is due to non-communicable diseases, which is blue on this box plot, and the injuries occupy the green section. Then you can see a country 
интермедиат in that spectrum is India, for example, where non-communicable diseases in the blue area is becoming increasingly important. And then you take Germany, for example, where non-communicable diseases form the majority of the, of the overall health burden. And the orange area, which is the um, neonatal and maternal and infectious causes, is really very small. So all countries can be placed on this spectrum. And the Russian Federation, for example, if you look at uh, this, this is from GBD Compare, which you can access online. This shows that the majority is blue. Most of the health burden within the Russian Federation is non-communicable disease. And I've shown here the, the uh, prevalence of blindness and vision impairment uh, as a small, uh, small part of that health burden in the Russian Federation. So over time, what is happening is that the non-communicable disease burden is, is increasing, and that, which includes most of the causes of vision loss. And the infectious causes, for example, trachoma, are reducing uh, within um, diseases. And we published our work showing the magnitude of vision impairment and blindness in the last global health, and you can find those publications um, from 2017. So we put all the data from those population-based studies, usually the summary data, into a very large database, and we disaggregate it by uh, age, gender, and, and it's a really very interesting project this because it shows you where the data is. So in, in the world, there is um, quite a lot of data from, uh, from South Asia, for example, um, uh, and East Asia. You can see the, each one of these uh, um, uh, bubbles is, um, indicates where the surveys have taken place. But you can see for Central Europe or Eastern Europe, there is very little data. And in fact, there's only one data point for 2008, you can see, that's the Br Branchevsky's uh, study in Samara in 2008. And so this is why it's very important to try and encourage more population-based studies, uh, certainly in areas where the data is very Limited. And that's what, why the UFA uh, eye and medical study is, is such an important study, because that provides data uh, for uh, Eastern uh, Europe in, within that region. And that's very important because we lack data uh, from that area. So uh, all these fantastic uh, publications and uh, outputs uh, are, are, are very much uh, welcomed. When you do an analysis like this, where we are calculating the numbers of people with vision impairment and blindness in the world, we have to look at multiple uh, population-based studies, and many studies use different definitions of blindness, so we have to uh, calculate for that and adjust for that, and that is the way we do this with a regression. Um, also, we have to look at the way in which blindness varies because of age, so we have to model that uh, separately also. And then we look at the vision impairment prevalence by country, year, age, and sex. And so to do that, I've given you an example here. This is Cambodia. And here we're looking at the studies from Cambodia. There are two rapid studies here. Um, and also there's a national study. But when we calculate the prevalence, we involve information from the regions and other countries from around that country to provide more information. And from that, we can then look at the, the, the amount of uh, vision impairment and blindness in women and men, so we can do a gender-specific analysis. But we can also look at change in blindness and vision impairment over time, which is also very interesting, and this was the first time this has been done. Traditionally, the causes of, of blindness that are looked at by the Global Burden of Disease Study are cataract glaucoma, 
What is interesting is that the women are more affected by blindness than men. Um, Interestingly, in Eastern Europe, um, the, there is a, in Central Europe, there is quite a high uh, um, uh, uh, inequality, I would say, between women and men uh, in terms of uh, blindness uh, prevalence. And what is really Interesting, I think, and uh, exciting is that the, and a good news story, and is that the age standardized prevalence of blindness and vision impairment is reducing over time. So it's, it's becoming less from 1990 to uh, 2015. We can show that in all the regions, the age standardized prevalence of blindness is reducing. So that was a good news story for the international uh, community. And you can see that mapped for all these different uh, regions. The difficulty is that because the populations of the world are getting older, although the age standardized prevalence is reducing, the number of people with blindness and vision impairment is getting greater, is increasing. And you can see we've modeled the numbers of people with blindness and SA, which is severe and moderate vision impairment. And you can see that we predict in the future this will continue to increase quite dramatically uh, because of the aging of population. Currently, 36 million people are blind in the world, uh, and moderate severe vision impairment at 217 million. And those people who see less than 6 over 12 to 6 over 18 who are mild vision impaired, about 188 million people, we estimate, for 2015. The number of people who are uncorrected presbyopes uh, is in the order of about a billion people. In, the, in England, we have a, uh, a very famous story, um, which I think is, has been translated, in the film has been translated in many countries, called Alice in Wonderland. And um, there's a, a very entertaining part of this story, where uh, Alice is the girl in the story, and she is running as fast as she can with the queen, but she cannot run any faster because the landscape behind her is moving at the same time. And I'll come to that in just a moment. So, if you look at the number of people in 1990, 31 million people were blind. In 2015, 36 million people were blind. You would expect there would be many more people blind by 2015 than 36 million because of the aging process, the aging of population. But the reason the numbers have not increased quite so much is because of the reduction in age standardized prevalence. So most probably due to a healthier uh, nations, uh, higher life expectancy over that time, but also hopefully uh, the interventions, for example, the increase in cataract surgery, particularly in China, particularly in India, the, the cataract surgical rate has increased enormously over that period of time, and uh, uh, that is contributing to uh, holding the numbers uh, relatively stable over that period of time. And you can see most of the disease, uh, in terms of most of blindness and vision impairment, is in the age group of 50 and above. And 
that's the same for blindness, moderate and severe vision impairment, so mild vision impairment. So you could ask the question, why is it that the age-standardized prevalence of blindness is reducing over time? Which causes of blindness are the driver for that reduction? And interestingly, it's mostly cataract. So cataract blindness is, is reducing over time, while most of the other causes are stable uh, or reducing slightly. In the case of diabetic retinopathy, however, the prevalence of blindness and vision impairment is increasing. Um, and you can see here, и this is, we've modeled the, uh, uh, the change in blindness prevalence over time, and you can see diabetic retinopathy is, is very much uh, on the increase over that period. Now, doing studies like this is really interesting. Um, uh, it's very exciting for the people who are involved in the study. Uh, it's important um, uh, for uh, production of, of uh, important research papers and for the scientific community. However, it's not of interest to me unless lots of people can access the data. And that is the reason why we teamed up with the uh, international Agency for Prevention of Blindness to create something called Vision Atlas. And you can go to this website here, atlas.iapb.org, and here you can access all countries' data over that period of time. And it's a really exciting project. So, for example, yesterday I looked at Russia, and I can go to this map, I can press on Russia, and uh, this gives me um, the number of uh, the prevalence of, uh, in this case, modern severe vision impairment, gives me the number of people affected by that, uh, by modern severe vision impairment, and the population affected. So you can do that for any country around the world. And this is really exciting because many countries do not have any data. Uh, they have not uh, done population-based uh, studies in their country, but the model, the the statistical model gives us an estimated number uh, for that country. So it's very helpful for nations that do not have data, such as the United Kingdom. So this is um, uh, pressing on Eastern Europe, uh, and if you press on Eastern Europe on the, on the website, um, it will give you a breakdown of blindness and or vision impairment by cause. So for my subject, which is glaucoma, I get, I get a prevalence for Eastern Europe and a population affected. So this is very helpful if you want to influence uh, governments or charities uh, to support um, efforts to uh, reduce uh, blindness. I said my interest was in glaucoma. Yes, yes it is. And, uh, uh, this is a paper that you will have seen that shows the prevalence of glaucoma that it is increasing over time. But this is just the prevalence of glaucoma. It's not the prevalence of blindness due to glaucoma or vision impairment due to glaucoma. And we know about the prevalence of glaucoma within our clinics, for example, uh, clinics, um, but we know much less know about the prevalence of glaucoma uh, within the community, within uh, the population. Uh, and there's some very good studies um, by, in the US, the uh, United States, the, the N. Haines study, which shows that 78% of glaucoma was undiagnosed uh, within the United States population. In, in Greece, uh, it was 57%. So this shows you the importance of epidemiology. It shows you the importance of population-based studies to understand how much of the need for care is within the population, which does not get to the hospitals or the clinics. In terms of glaucoma, you could ask how many people are, are glaucoma blind? Is it changing? Uh, in the population, there is now data for that. Um, we have some information on uh, the blindness of glau uh, due to glaucoma within, um, within clinics. And actually, that, that is not um, trivial. Uh, glaucoma is, is not a trivial disease. And um, it's been, in some studies, this is a European study, showed that uh, by 10 years, 26% of people within clinics 
are blind uh, uh, in at least one eye uh, due to glaucoma. That was from Sweden. But I, I, it would not surprise me if that's the case in, in lots of other clinics around the world. And why do people continue to go blind due to glaucoma? We don't know. Is it because a third of them are undiagnosed, a third of them are not treated properly, or perhaps a third are not compliant with therapy? So interesting uh, questions. And also the other question comes, yeah, are patients actually safe when they're in the hospital environment? Um, the, if, unless you are fully aware of your clinic population, patients can continue to deteriorate. And glaucoma is a difficult disease uh, to treat. And I showed you all that lovely data from other countries uh, around the world. I'm embarrassed that in the United Kingdom we have no population based data. And so that's the reason why in the UK we are planning a national um, uh, study of, uh, of eye health. And I hope that we can do this. Uh, in, perhaps just, just as, as well as the UFA eye and medical well, study, although I, I expect it probably will not be as good. We have the UFA study uh, as, a, as an exemplar uh, to So I'm just going to summarize this talk. So I talked about the rising importance of chronic disability. You saw how non-communicable diseases, most of those are related in terms of ophthalmology, uh, most of our uh, diseases of uh, vision uh, loss are in the non-communicable uh, group, and that is increasing in terms of the proportion of, of health burden. Although the age standardized prevalence of blindness is reducing, the population aging means that the absolute numbers of people are increasing. And there are important changes in causal contribution. For example, diabetic retinopathy is very much on the increase, and it's important to highlight that. And we need much better data on prevalence and utilization. So, as um, uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland uh, says, we have, to, we have to run faster than the landscape is moving in order to uh, tackle this burden. Спасибо большое, профессор. Это действительно очень интересное сообщение, особенно для нас и тех ребят, которые занимаются эпидемиологией. У вас есть ли какие-то вопросы? Пока думают, я бы хотел вас спросить. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Just a minute. Uh, uh, мой вопрос заключается в том, что вы uh, очень хорошо сказали, что те исследования, uh, которые uh, well, проводят, uh, исследов... uh, uh, они очень интересны для самих исследователей. Uh, будьте добры, uh, скажите, пожалуйста, вот эти эпидемиологические исследования, so они интересуют ли ну, какие-то международные организации, всемирные организации здравоохранения, организации объединенных наций, потому что Uh, это, как бы мы ведь определяем тенденции будущего, и, наверное, правительство должны какие-то меры начинать применять. Вот это есть ли связь с обратной связью вот от таких организаций? Yes, yes, certainly that is uh, да, безусловно. Uh, extremely important. Это so the, огр... um, имеет огромное uh, значение. There is a requirement есть определенный запрос, требования со стороны ВОЗ, Всемирной организации здравоохранения, о том, чтобы страны направляли отчетность ВОЗ о степени распространенности слепоты, нарушения зрения в каждой стране. И это часть вот этого глобального плана действия, который направлен на борьбу с слепотой, которую можно было избежать. Поэтому эпидемиологические исследования играют очень важное значение для больших организаций, таких как Всемирная организация здравоохранения или он. Ведь именно эти исследования, например, исследование, которое сделано здесь в Уфе, оно, такие исследования позволяют оценить долю потери зрения по разным причинам. И это можно тогда использовать данные для того, чтобы оценить состояние в 
в регионе и в стране в целом. Поэтому это, безусловно, имеет очень важное значение, такие исследования, такие данные. Спасибо большое. Вы очень вдохновили всех исследователей, которые занимаются последними эпидемиологическими исследованиями. Есть ли еще у кого-то вопросы? Пожалуйста, пожалуйста. Можно сюда подойти к микрофону? Добрый день. При исследовании инуитов в Гренландии, я так понимаю, что идеально изолированная популяция была проведена генетически изолированная форма, в том числе и закрытая глаукома. Это очень интересный вопрос. Это исследование проводилось 22 года назад. Это было еще, по сути, до некоторых, до того, как генетические исследования появились. Поэтому нет, генетический материал не собирался. Хотя офтальмологи ее имя Пул Хелли Эксберг из Дании. Она проведила интересное исследование по наследованию наследственности глаукомы много лет назад. Поэтому есть данные по наследованию, но меньше данных по генетике в этой популяции. Спасибо. Есть еще вопросы? Пожалуйста, пожалуйста, профессор Ямамото. Спасибо за интересную лекцию. У меня один вопрос. Вы показали, что число нарушений зрения по причине диаптической ретинопатии увеличивается. Это, как вы считаете, объясняется улучшением диеты в развивающих странах? Правильно ли я понимаю? Это интересный вопрос. И на самом деле невозможно тут однозначно прокомментировать, потому что у нас нет вот этой детализации такой данных. Это возможное объяснение, почему рост происходит. Да, может быть изменение в образе жизни, образе питания со временем играет важную роль. Может быть, при помощи нашей работы наши можно посмотреть на такие популяции и распространенность диабетической и другие рискфакторы осмотреть ожирение, например, или диету. Но пока ответить однозначно нельзя. Спасибо. Спасибо, Спасибо большое. Есть Спасибо. еще Спасибо желающие so задать uh, вопрос? Any... Все вопросы закончены. По всей видимости, все очень хотят обедать. Спасибо большое. У нас перерыв на обед, и сразу же после перерыва у нас будет следующая лекционная сессия. Пожалуйста, не опасно, 14.00. Технологии кросслинкинга и их практические применения.